From years of anxiety to warrior and mentor, Bradley Robinson created the Anxiety Project to help you end your anxiety naturally. Let's mold the new you and let's end anxiety together. Hello and welcome back to the Anxiety Project podcast number 85. I am Brad Robinson and today I have a powerful anxiety story of mine I really want to share. And it's because I learned a lot of great lessons, but it is a huge it's a huge step in someone's recovery to implement the techniques and the strategies I talk about in this episode related to that story of mine. Now, this story revolves around my previous fear of needles. Now, I talked to you before. I told you the story in a previous podcast. I believe it was uh, my powerful anxiety story number uh, six that I talked about my fear of needles. And that event that happened when I went to the doctors and I had to get my blood drawn and I was so anxious, I was so nervous. And I talk about what I did to prepare for that day and my experience going through it, what I was thinking, and then the aftermath, how how I felt and why confronting those situations that make you fearful desensitizes yourself. And it's a huge part of the anxiety recovery journey. You have to confront those scenarios that make you feel anxious, that make you uncomfortable. Because in those situations, your amygdala, the part of your brain that initiates this fight, flight, or freeze response, is perceiving the situation as being dangerous, life-threatening. And so you have to prove to that part of your brain that this place, it's not so fearful. I'm not going to die in this situation. And anxiety sufferers experience it all the time. I used to. I used to be at the mall. I used to be uh, driving my car. Wherever I was, I I would experience these, these panic episodes And I had to stay in my situation to prove to that part of my brain that this situation, this this experience that I'm having is not life-threatening. I'm not going to die. So I had to continuously prove to myself and prove to that part of my brain that I'm not going to die. This isn't a heart attack. I'm not going to faint. And I had to do that continuously until I fully desensitized myself from those feelings and sensations. So I have another needle story today. This needle story happened this past year. You know, now I'm the anxiety project. I have the YouTube channel and I have a program and a coaching sessions. I know how to handle these challenges because life is always going to throw a challenge your way always so the goal to recovering from anxiety is to know how to handle those challenges because they're always going to come and so if you're struggling with anxiety well when a challenge presents itself It's going to be so overwhelming. You don't know how to do it because you're already carrying around this baggage. But once you overcome anxiety, you develop the tools, you develop the techniques, you release all this past emotional baggage. When a challenge comes your way, you know how to handle that challenge. You can confront it properly. You know the techniques, you know the strategies. And so today I'm going to talk about how I handle, how I handled a challenge that came my way. 
And so to do that, I want to talk about my sister who who was pregnant and she was going to have two boys. And so one of the the children the doctors found out that they had some skin condition. And that was overwhelming to her. She she was working through that challenge, figuring it out, and she asked me and my family, my mom and my dad, to get our blood drawn because they want to see where this skin condition originated from to see if we have it because the doctors found out that she was a carrier of this skin condition and that's how one of the boys got the the gene, the condition. And so she asked me, and of course, I said, yeah, of course, anything for you. But I, 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 but I, I felt there was a part of me that said, oh, no, going back into the dragon's lair, going back into a place that, you know, made me uncomfortable in the past. And, and of course, I'm going to do it. But then there was this part of me that... I had to confront, right? And there's always going to be that part of you that comes forward. And you got to confront that underlying issue, that underlying challenge, I like to say, challenge. And I had to confront that challenge. So it popped up and I'm like, oh, well, I haven't really fully desensitized myself from this fear of needles. So this is something, this is a challenge for me. I'm going to confront this. This is a good opportunity to prove my old self wrong. Now, knowing all of the te- all of the techniques, strategies to handle such a challenge, I I started to do it. I in the morning before I went to get my blood drawn, I did a manifestation meditation. Now, I talk about it on the podcast before, but essentially what it is, is you sit with yourself in a quiet place with no distractions, and you go through the event from morning until night, the day rather, and you picture how you want the day to go. And this speaks directly to the unconscious mind. The unconscious mind recognizes imagery and emotions. So I spoke to my unconscious mind with this image of how I want the, 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 the event to go, the needle event. I want to arrive there uh, uh, with a good posture, confident, walking in there, looking confident to do it. And, and being strong, and I'm picturing myself being strong as I'm getting my blood drawn, and then walking out of there with my head high, looking up in, into the sky, and maybe striking a power pose, you know, with both your hands on your hips like Superman or Superwoman, and looking up to the sky, feeling proud, and, ac- and accomplishing something that's not easy. We all have are dragons that we need to confront. We all have those. They're different. Every dragon is different, and we all have to contend with them. But how do we contend with these dragons? Right? How do we? We're never taught this in school growing up, how to deal with life's challenges, the death of a loved one, maybe getting an illness, dealing with... Uh, job change or loss, all of these life challenges, we're not taught this. So a lot of my clients come to me and uh, talking about these different dragons in their life. And I coach them through how to confront these dragons, how to release that baggage Uh, from the unconscious mind that they've been carrying around since they were children. 
And we need to develop these techniques and these strategies to handle these challenges that always come their way. So I did that manifestation meditation in the morning and I went there, you know, I got out of my car, went into the building and I was walking up the stairs and then all of a sudden it hit me. My anxiety response turned on. It It's perceived the environment as being dangerous. And since I've come so far in my recovery, I've re- fully recovered, I developed all these techniques and I know all about anxiety, I, I, know, I realized right away what it was. Oh, my anxiety response is active. Yes. Okay. But, it, but then I said to myself, I'm going in there any, anyways, no matter what. There's nothing going to stop me. Because in that moment, my fight, flight, or freeze response was active. And it was telling me to flight, to flee, right? It's telling me to get out of there because I felt it. I felt the the lightheadedness. I felt the uh, a shallow depth of field. I felt the weird sensations in my chest and my stomach. I felt all of those and I knew it was anxiety. Since I've gone through it so many times, I realized, oh wait, this is just a challenge for me. Time to tackle it. Time to confront it. No matter what happens in there, I'm going in there, right? No matter what. There's nothing going to stop me. So I walked in there and I sat down on the chair. And she came in after 10 minutes of waiting. So I had to sit with myself for 10 minutes just to, you know, get myself in the right place, the right frame of mind. I had to talk to myself be like, you know what, doesn't matter, sit with it, you know, I'm going to go through with this no matter what. Um, I started to picture in my mind how I wanted the event to go, and I started to look around the room. Now, this is important. Just look around the room and, and, and just sit with yourself in the room, and just being there, you're strengthening new neuronal pathways. I was. I was strengthening new pathways, telling that old pathway that that is associated with the fear of needles that there's nothing here that's going to harm me. There's no threat here. And so I sat there. She came in. You know, I'm still I'm still feeling those sensations. They're not as bad as when I used to struggle from severe anxiety. But I was still feeling anxious. I knew that this this was a dragon I needed to contend with. So she came in, got the needle out, and I stuck my arm out, and I, I just went with it. You know, even though it's uncomfortable, just do it. Just do it. This is the flooding technique. You know, just put yourself in the situation that's making you fearful And just do it. No matter how bad you feel, no matter how uncomfortable it is, you just do it. And she took my blood, and after she was done, um, I immediately, you know, I rolled down my sleeve. I sat there, and she, and she, oh yes, I want to. I want to say this before I continue. Before she took my blood, she asked me, Brad, do you have a problem with needles? Now, this is comical because I was battling this dragon of mine. And she she said this, hey, Brad, do you have a problem with needles? And I said to her, nope, I do not. With confidence and with clarity, right? Because when you say that, I'm acting out the part, right, of the hero in in this situation, right? I'm acting out, you know, no. But by saying that, I'm voluntarily confronting what I what I don't want, right? And it's okay. I mean, if you if you really do have an issue 
you know, you tell them, uh, um, you know, I want to lie down or, or something like that. Right. But for me, I wanted to, to play the part fully. I wanted to say, nope, I'm not afraid of needles because I wanted to fake it until I make it, right? So I said, no, I'm not afraid. And she went on to do it. And then after I, I rolled down my sleeve and and she left the room and I, I, I just gave myself on my arm, you know, I patted my arm saying, you know, good job, you did it. I'm rewarding myself for confronting this dragon and and I just sat there with myself, just rationalizing, using my rational mind to say, hey, you know, you did it, great job, uh, this is something that you've been contending with, and you confronted it forthrightly, and that's what heroes do, right? Heroes do that, and I left. And I felt great. Then I got this huge dopamine high. I felt good. You know, I did something today that, you know, I was nervous about, confronted it, and I feel great. So you get that dopamine kick. And that dopamine kick is so important because it's it's telling your older uh, fearful uh, pathway, the, the one that's associating needles to life-threatening, it's associating that pathway with, you know, oh, like th this is a good feeling. Confronting this dragon, overcoming it equals good feeling. Now think about that. That's really important to understand. So th through this whole event, I learned that I was still sensitized to, to needles. Uh, I knew when my, my, when my sister first asked me, because of those feelings, right? I felt a little bit, oh, there's parts of me that are like, don't do it. But I, I wanted to do it. I needed to do it. So parts of me were screaming, no, don't go in there. And being so aware of my body and having this developing mindset, I then thought how good this is for my future self. I get to challenge myself. The more I put myself in these uncomfortable situations, the braver I get and less sensitized I become. It's always going to feel uncomfortable and it's never easy, but it's important that you do it no matter what. The goal is to expose yourself as much as you can to the situation until you feel completely bored of it. There's a great way to tackle this. Instead of just showing up like the flooding technique, like what I did, you can prepare yourself systematically. So I would sit in front of the computer, pull up YouTube, and type in people getting their blood drawn. And I would watch videos of people getting their blood taken. And I would do that until I get bored of the video. You want to become bored of the video. That's a good sign because... At first, you're going to feel sensitive. You're going to watch the videos and you're going to feel a little bit queasy. You're going to feel uncomfortable. But you want to watch those videos until you just get bored of it. And that is a great sign. You know you're getting less sensitive towards that situation. Now, I used to perceive doctor's offices as these foreign, scary places, but now, since I voluntarily confront them, I have lessened my fear over them. So sit with yourself and then ask yourself, what am I avoiding? Because 
your unconscious is a mysterious thing and you're most likely avoiding certain situations and places that are making you uncomfortable. It could be a social gathering with friends. It could be a dinner date. It could be going to the mall. It could be going to work. Where Whatever it is, what are you unconsciously avoiding? And the unconscious will answer, and you're not going to like the answer. You might even try and push the answer away, but really ask yourself and really want the answers, and then they will come forth. Now, write them down and begin the process. Just pick one thing, one thing that you're avoiding, and work at it. Confront that thing continuously until you fully desensitize yourself. Now, with this needle event, I realized that I haven't done it enough because the feeling came back, the feeling of anxiety, the feeling of of being uncomfortable. And I knew, oh man, this is something I haven't worked hard on, right? I need to continue this thing. So this fear is now even less of a fear for me because each time the op- the, the 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 opportunity to get my blood taken to get a needle I will go and do it there's nothing that's going to stop me not even my fear response even though it kicks in I know I since I've overcome anxiety and developed all of these techniques I know exactly what's going on I know that it's perceived this situation as being life-threatening and it's a good opportunity to challenge it, to strengthen a new neuronal pathway within my brain, right? So ask yourself, what 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 am I avoiding? You will not like the answer, but whatever the answer or answers are, you have the opportunity to confront them and... If you're hiking in the woods and you see a bear, your instincts tell you to run. Your instincts tell you to get the heck out of there. Your fight, flight, your your flight response activates and you want to get out. Then when you run away, the act of running strengthens and links the pathway to the bear as being a threat. So the act of running away, you're linking that bear to a threat, to being life-threatening. So your actions are really crucial, right? So if you're unconsciously acting out, avoiding places, you're strengthening the pathway of fear towards that situation. Or if you run away from the shopping mall, from the grocery store, wherever you are, if you run away, if I was to run away from that doctor's office that day when my anxiety kicked in, I would have strengthened that fear over the situation even more. And then it would have became worse because... I would have gone home. I would have, you know, spent the rest of the day calming down. But worse is that if I was to do it again, to go back there, my anxiety would be worse because I acted out running away. And that is linking the part of my brain, the amygdala, to that situation, right? That that fear is now linked to the doctor's office. And the the fact that I pushed through that resistance when I was walking up the stairs, I went in there and saying to myself, you know what, whatever happens, happens. If it kills me, let it kill me. I am strengthening a new pathway. Because when you voluntarily do something and you voluntarily confront a fear, you strengthen new pathways. 
and the old pathways weaken and weaken. But then a, a lot of people tell me, hey, you know, Brad, I, I've confronted these fears voluntarily over and over again, and I still feel anxious in this situation. Is it not going away? What if my anxiety doesn't go away? What if I'm stuck like this forever? My answer to that is you haven't done it enough. You haven't done it enough. You have to do it enough so that your amygdala becomes bored of the situation. Even if you have to do it 50 times, you have to do it 50 times. It happened to me when I went to the symphony hall with Maggie, uh, you know, each time I would go, I would feel anxious. And I'd be like, oh, not this again, right? But after the eighth, ninth time, my anxiety was like a level two, barely even there, right? And you just have to keep going. Even, even though you might think, well, it's just not going away. My anxiety's still here. You know, you're not doing it enough. You have to continuously do it. Continuously confront the things that make you uncomfortable, that make you anxious, until your anxiety level is below a level four, a level three, or a zero even. Just continuously do it. Continuously confront it, and you'll realize that you're not going to die, that this situation is not life-threatening. And that's proving your old self wrong. And that's where I'm going to leave you on today's podcast episode. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And remember, do not let anxiety define who you are. I will see you on the next podcast episode. Bye for now. Brad's powerful anxiety recovery program is available at unpluganxiety.com. The Anxiety Project program is downloadable and puts the power of anxiety recovery in your own hands. What are you waiting for? Visit unpluganxiety.com for more details. Recovery starts now.